charge now of the Van de Graaff, thereby lowering the potential of the Van de Graaff. And so these crazy sparks that occur here can no longer occur, but now they will. Can you hear them? And now you can't. If I were crazy, then I would develop a corona discharge between the Van de Graaff and myself. One way I could do that is by approaching with my fingertips, as I mentioned earlier, but that may be a little bit too dangerous because I may draw a spark. I may be hit by lightning, which is the last thing that I would want today. However, a coronal discharge using these tinsels may be less dangerous. So I get a continuous flow of current, which now unfortunately doesn't go through the lightning rod, but now it goes straight through my body. And I can assure you that I can feel that. It's probably a very low current. It may be only a few microamperes, but it's not funny. It's not pleasant. <laughs> but anything for my students, what the hell. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see the tinsels? I'm now in a corona discharge, and I feel the current through my fingers. It's a continuous discharge now. This is St. Elmo's fire. You can't see. Ah, that was lightning. <laughs> Boy, you got something for your $27,000. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So you saw both corona discharge and you saw lightning. Boy, you were luckier than the, than the first class, by the way. Clearly, lightning can be dangerous. Lightning can cause a fire. It can excite, it can explode fumes. If you gas your car, just the flow of gasoline can charge up the nozzle. Friction can charge things up. That's why the nozzle is always grounded, because a spark could cause a major explosion. If you fill a balloon with hydrogen, then the flow of hydrogen is friction, can charge up the balloon and a spark can then ignite the hydrogen. And this has led to a classic tragic accident. It's a long time ago, but it's so classic that I really have to show this to you. Hitler was very proud of his large airships. They are named after Graf Zeppelin. The Germans called them the Zeppelins. We called them the Ridgibles or Blimps. And one of the largest ones that Hitler Germany ever built was the Hindenburg, 803 feet long, had 7 million cubic feet of hydrogen. And the Germans couldn't fill their zeppelins with helium because they didn't have helium. And the Americans were not going to sell them helium for very good reason. And so they had to fill them with hydrogen. And so the Hindenburg, which was the name of this zeppelin, came over in May 1937, and when it arrived at Lakehurst in New Jersey, it started a gigantic fire. It came over in 35 hours, transatlantic, and you see here the explosion. May 6, 7.25 in the afternoon. There were 45 passengers on board, and 35 died in this fire. The speculation was that this may have been sabotage. It's still quite possible, although the official inquiry board concluded that it was St. Elmo's fire, that as the uh, ship moored on this mast here, that a spark flew over and that that caused the, um, the explosion, the fire. And this was the end of the dirigibles for Germany. Napoleon, also not the nicest man on earth, uh, had the suspicion when many of his soldiers got sick in Egypt that this was the result of marsh gas. And they suspected that this bad air that they could smell when they were near marshes, that that was the cause of the disease. Bad air in French is mal air, 
and so they called the disease malaria. And so the way that they tested the air to make sure that the soldiers wouldn't get malaria was to build a small gun, which was like so. This was a conducting barrel. And they would let some of this marsh gas in the gun and put a cork on here, close it off. And here was a sharp pin. This pin was completely insulated from the barrel, the conducting barrel. And then they would put some charge on here so that the spark would fly over there. It's really the precursor of the spark plug that we have in our cars. It's no different. And so if indeed there was then this marsh gas in there, there might be an explosion. And that was a warning then that um, there may be danger for the soldiers. Well, this morning I was walking through the building. I was in lobby seven. And I smelled some funny, it was a funny smell. And I was just wondering whether perhaps, who knows, at MIT anything can happen, whether uh, there was some, uh, some uh, gas there that shouldn't be there. And so I brought my, uh, my special gun, which is here, which is uh, built after Napoleon. And um, you see here this uh, little sphere. And I opened it up the cork here, and I let some of that air in, building seven. And then I decided that we, you and I, will do the test and see whether perhaps there was some, uh, some gas there that uh, may cause some danger. So I would have to cause a discharge then inside the, the barrel here. I can try to do that by combing my hair, uh, but that may not be sufficient amount of charge. So I can always make sure that there will be a spark inside that gun and use this, this disc, which has a little bit more charge on it. So here is then this um, lobby seven gas inside. Now, of course, there's one possibility in that there was nothing wrong with the air, in which case you will see nothing. And there is another possibility that the air wasn't kosher enough and that you may see here small Loop. And since it's going to be very small at best, you have to be very quiet, otherwise you won't hear anything. And so let's first try now with my comb. I have my comb here to see whether I can generate a spark inside this barrel. And that may not work because I'm not sure that I get enough charge on this comb. No, that doesn't work at all. Well, let's see whether we can use this instrument. <laughs> I sure hope that we won't get malaria. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>